Hello, my name is Danielle Smith. I'm the author of Shine Bright, a very personal history of black women in pop. I'm also the host of the podcast, Black Girl Songbook. But we're not really here today to talk about me, are we? But wait, maybe we are actually, because we're here to talk about talent. We're here to talk about opportunity. We're here to talk about the future of Hollywood and diversity. And we have gathered and what <laughs> is going on over here? <laughs> Look at this group of amazing women. Women who are not just like doing the damn thing, but like changing the game as they do it. So we're going to talk it through today. But before we do, let me, let me just run through exactly who some of these women are. Now we wanna act like we know who Lena Waite is and perhaps we do. But I believe people's CV needs to get broken down every once in a while. So let's just call her, and I'm going to my notes because that's just how deep it is. Lena Waithe is an award-winning writer, creator, producer, actor, and CEO. Lena Waithe continues to lead the cultural revolution in Hollywood. She's the CEO of the brilliantly named Hillman Grad production company, amazingness, they make everything that's amazing. <laughs> and listen, and Hillman Grad is about rising voices. Hillman Grad isn't just about Lena Waits making it, it's about really everybody making it. So who else do we have? Do we have LaFawn Davis? I think we do. <laughs> now, you may not be familiar with LaFawn, but I am. Because LaFawn is the senior VP of ESG at Indeed. LaFawn leads teams that focus on sustainability, diversity, inclusion, belonging, social impact. She's all about inclusive hiring products and AI ethics. Lady. <laughs> Girl. Yes. Okay, let me give all of it too because listen, she is named to Entrepreneur Magazine's 100 Women of Impact, Fast Company's Queer 50. She is talked about in the San Francisco Business Times Most Influential Women in Business. What? <laughs> she serves as an advisory board member for Lesbians Who Tech and power to fly. Welcome, LaFawn. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now wait a minute. What's funny is that when I meet girls that have my same name, sometimes I get a little attitude. I do. <laughs> I do. But not with Danielle Brooks, though. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Danielle Brooks is known for her work on the stage as well as the screen. Now, we all know her from Orange is the New Black. Okay, tasty. <laughs> but it's not just that, is it? Because Danielle also portrayed the legendary Mahalia Jackson in her biopic. Like, I could tear up just thinking about that performance. She also made her Broadway debut in The Color Purple, and recently she made huge headlines by being cast in the upcoming film version of The Color Purple, and not only that, she is the co-founder of Black Women on Broadway. Welcome, Danielle. Thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness, who's coming up next? Let me flip through my magic. Is that Yvonne Orgy over? How you doing? What's going on, beauty? <laughs> I mean, takes one to know one. Oh, <laughs> this is a fun panel already. Okay, so listen. I could say actress or actor. I could say comedian. But I could also just say, like, comedic genius. I could say audience favorite. I mean, yes, she's known as Issa Rae's best friend, Molly Molly. Okay. <laughs> This is exciting for me. I mean, she was really right there, like being one of the twin towers of Insecure. 
and her one hour stand up special, Mama, I Made It. Come on, she was shooting in Nigeria. She was shooting in Washington, DC. And there's all other kind of things like just, there's a recent feature film called Vacation Friends. She hosts My Mom, Your Dad. I mean, there's just a lot going on with Miss Yvonne. Welcome to the situation. Thank you. Oh, it's a situation. It is, right? Is it not a whole situation? Oh, it's a whole and complete situation. Yeah. <laughs> but then I'm looking down to the youngest among us, the youngest in charge. Hello. And if you get that <laughs> reference, you know my age and I'm not mad about sharing mm -hmm. it. Is that Sky Jackson down there? It is. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm happy to be here today. I am so happy to see you, but I see you all the time. Do you know why? Why? What is that? Because you're <laughs> everywhere. You are everywhere. I mean, you are a household name. Miss Disney Plus, Miss Disney Channel, mm -hmm. Zuri Ross. Come on. Yeah. What's going on? Bunked? Shiro's? Mm -hmm. Man in the White Van, The Muppets Haunted Mansion. Yeah. Semi-finals on Dancing with the Stars. Uh-huh. Wrote a book. <laughs> author. Yes, authors, okay. <laughs> it's called Reach for the Sky, How to Inspire, Empower, and Clap Back. And it explores Sky's own lessons about life and her rise to stardom, <laughs> as well as the importance of self-acceptance. Yes, girl empowerment and her classy little clapback mentality. But see, what's really going on with Sky is how powerful she is at social, at social media. Because she has 8 million followers on Instagram. She has 19 plus million followers on TikTok. And she has 1.6 million followers at her YouTube channel. Scott, we're going to do a little seminar about social media all after, right, all right, yeah, after the panel. <laughs> it is so great to see everybody, to meet everybody. So yeah, let's get it popping. Let's do it. Let's talk about opportunity. It's a funny word. I think it means different things to different people. I think a lot of people feel like everybody has the same opportunity. I don't know if that's true. Lena, I'm gonna jump off with you. Okay. And ask how you define opportunity, especially in Hollywood. Hmm. You know, I think for me, opportunity can come in different forms. Mm -hmm. I think I definitely took advantage of opportunities that were not financial opportunities for me when I first started. In Los okay, Angeles. wait a second, let's break that down. You took opportunities that were not financial opportunities. Meaning I would work for like lunch, you know, like I would be an intern and they would like pay me in lunch and I'm like, cool, because I wanted the opportunity to be in a space. Um, even if I wasn't being paid, I wanted that opportunity. And because my family was able to help me with paying my rent and things like that, I was able to intern for free. So. But what I was able to do now in this position, I pay interns a wage. So that way, if their family isn't able to supplement their, their income and help with their rent, they can still learn in the space in which they need to learn. Because I needed to be an intern. I needed to learn and so, so do all those things. And so, but at the time, y'all here like 2008, 2007, it was a different time. Now we're in 2022. And even in that space, so much has changed. So I think for me, I knew how important that opportunity was for me, even though it wasn't a financial one. I knew what it did for me in order for me to be in the position I'm in now in order to give people paid opportunities to still be on their learning journey. So I think both opportunities are, were very significant. I needed that opportunity to get in there and learn as to get in the door. Yes. But now things have changed, things have shifted. I can't expect people to have the same opportunity I had where there wasn't pay and I'm just like, giving them food and it's cool. Now it's like, okay, let me adjust to the times. Let me give you what I didn't have, um, all while still giving you the things I did get. So I think that's the word opportunity sometimes can shift and change depending on the year you're living in. Because right now, opportunities look very different, you know, than they did when I first moved out here. So even when people come up to me, I was at an event last night, a lot of young folks coming up. How long is it going to take? What is it going to need? And I said, honestly, I can't answer that. Because I'm like, it could take you 20 years. And if so, so what? What else you got to do? 
You know what I'm saying? So, so again, for me, that's what I watch. I tell them, I'm like, opportunities are numerous wherever you find them, but it's about how you take advantage of them. It's about you not being impatient to see when that opportunity gonna pay off. Yes, that is such a good definition of opportunity. And I wanna say too, before I get to Scott, because I'm coming to you next. Um, we're not here to be super polite. We're not here to be waiting on everybody to finish. Now we don't wanna be rude and interrupt, but inject. Raise a hand. Let's have a good discussion. Right. There's no brunch in the middle, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but let's pretend yeah. a little bit. Let's okay. Yes. All right. Okay, so, so Scott, tell us okay. about Opportunity. You started very, very young yeah. in the business. So I'm wondering, like, when you're essentially like a child, a tween, mm -hmm. what does Opportunity look like at that point? Yeah, I started modeling at nine months old Ooh. and going from there to TV shows, commercials at one. So I kind of was, you know, blessed and got these opportunities, but it wasn't easy for me. It didn't just happen overnight. It was, it was a lot of work and it was my mom too as well, being that support system for me. And um, of course I was on the Disney Channel, but I feel like me being on the Disney Channel has maybe had to work harder for certain opportunities which is fine, but sometimes people tend not to take you as serious because they look at you a certain way. So any opportunity that I do get, I try to make it another opportunity after that for myself. Um, and even just working, writing on the back end and trying to make opportunities for other people eventually in the future. But I feel like, you know, it's 2022 now and like Leonard was saying, so many things have changed. It's different even from five years ago. Um, and now, you know, it's a little bit harder as a darker skinned girl. I feel like sometimes we can be overlooked or overshadowed and we shouldn't feel that way, but it's a important discussion. And I feel like we do have people like Jordan Peele and Ava DuVernay that are using their opportunities and giving us opportunities to, you know, be the star and have some shine on us. And then I just want to use my spotlight to give other people opportunities too. Absolutely, absolutely. There's, there's been a lot of talk here so far about how much things have changed just like say over the last five, seven, 10 years. So I'm going to go to Danielle and say, because I remember when Orange is the New Black first came out and man, that show landed like an explosion on the culture. Mm -hmm. Like everyone had to watch it. The characters were just so influential. Um, every magazine, every website was covering the show. Um, and there you were, like giving us everything, <laughs> every episode. So I'm wondering, like, what was, what's changed? Yeah. You know what I mean? From, let's say, the Orange is the New Black <laughs> premiere to right now, look at all the stuff that you're working on. I know, it's crazy. I came in a very beautiful time because I was not seeing myself a lot on screen before Orange. I remember like getting to see Amber Riley and Glee, and I was just like, oh, there's somebody dark skin and plus size, she's doing her thing. But there was not an array of us like there is now um, because there's so much of, there's so many different layers and colors and like just our fabric is so different even with this panel. So when I stepped into Orange, it was like, oh my gosh, we all get to win. This is amazing. Like I get to be here with Uzo and Adrian, Samira, and all the Hispanic girls, white girls, and we all up in here, different ages. And they were really setting the tone and showing people that we're all different. And the beautiful part that I loved too was that we all was wearing the same stuff. Mm -hmm. We ain't had no makeup I didn't even on. Think about mm -hmm. that. We, we were just so you got yeah. to purely get to love the human being. And so that just blew my mind. But then when you speak about opportunity, you can have all of the talent in the world, but sometimes yet still not be able to reach past that next hurdle. And I felt that way with some of my sisters. You know, it's like a lot of us are out here winning, but sometimes that opportunity gets stifled. And how do we stop that from happening? And so I feel like with my girls on Orange, and I found my circle now of, of people that I can lean on, it's like we, we talk to each other about how, how you move it. I remember calling Lena, sister, I'm looking for a writer for this show. Like, and she sent me a list of names. Me, 
And Yvonne will sit down and talk business and, and real stuff and numbers and all these things so that we can figure out how can we get the most. How can we move in this How business? can we move and really get bigger opportunities? Yes. We're going to talk to LaFon about really some specifics about that. But I have to go to Yvonne because from what I understand, this wasn't always necessarily your dream or was it? It wasn't. And, you know, when you talk about opportunity, I was just thinking about how even though we were all just in this like global pandemic, this global crisis, I'm like, there's opportunity even in that because the last the last global thing for me was the economic recession in 2008. And that's when I found my opportunity to be like, oh, well, if everybody else don't have got a job, then I can be a two degree having Nigerian American woman also without a job, because I'm in the same pool as everybody. Let me go ahead and go to New York and see what opportunities are there. So it's like looking at something that could be detrimental and seeing what is the opportunity that lies in here? How can I reinvent myself? We're all, the playing field is kind of level. We all went through it. Nobody didn't have COVID, you know, like every country had COVID. And so it's one of those things where you really have to grab opportunities and see it as an opportunity to take, to reinvent yourself. And so for me, moving to New York, um, after getting a master's in public health, I was just like, let me slang these jokes and see, you know, what's, what's really good. Cause that's what God told me to do. I'm gonna listen to him cause he might understand me a little bit better than I understand me. And, you know, cut to a couple years later, it worked. Um, but then on the flip side, it's like, to what Danielle was saying, I had talent, but I didn't have opportunity. And then you have someone like an Issa Rae who has this amazing opportunity to, she could have stacked the deck with all hitters. <laughs> Just like, listen, everybody who has done a show already and at the premium cable level, come do, come do the show with me. But she was just like, hey fam, I, they let me in, so I'm gonna let all y'all in too. And that was my opportunity. And as you can see, like, it was all in all of us. We, we didn't shine because all of a sudden, we, we, we got to a place like shining was already in us. We just had the opportunity to illuminate a little yes. bit more. Yes. I'm so happy that you brought that up about talent and opportunity and like one going to the next one, because I want to talk to LaFon about just like, what is that bridge? And I'm really curious too, like what does Indeed do to help like help or facilitate or encourage, inspire people who have talent to find opportunity. Yeah, so I think what everyone is sharing here around talent is everybody has a skill set. Everyone has a skill set, no matter what you want to do, no matter what industry you want to go into. And then there's opportunities that may or may not come your way. And what's in between that are barriers. So barriers to entry, barriers that stop you from seeing the opportunity or for those opportunities being available to you. So at Indeed, what we're focusing on is we have pretty audacious goals by the year 2030. And one of those goals is to help 30 million job seekers facing barriers get hired. So barriers can look like not having a college degree. I don't have a college degree. And I share that a lot because I'm a senior vice president and it's rare. Come on. That yeah. someone doesn't have a college Let's degree. Let's just celebrate that. Well, thank you. Come on. <laughs> I just want to say that one more time for the record book, I will say please. it one more time. I do not have a college degree, and I share that because I'm a senior vice president, and it's rare, and it doesn't mean, it, all it means is I didn't go to an institution, but I am very educated. And so I share that because that removes a barrier to entry. People that are justice impacted have a criminal record. There's 70 million people in the United States with a criminal record, one in three adults. And they are stopped from getting a job every single day. It's not about their skill set or their talent. It's about the opportunity, right? People that have a disability, people that are um, military veterans. There's so many things that can stop you from getting into the types of jobs that you want. And so what we're looking at is really understanding the job seeker, no matter the industry, understanding what struggles they have, you know, are they urgently seeking? Are we helping them find jobs faster? And can we remove those barriers that are in between the talent yes. and the opportunity? Yes. Listen, I, I could talk about opportunity 
all day with you guys. So thank you again. And please visit Indeed.com slash Rising Voices to learn more about this whole initiative. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.